This past spring, after two and a half years of investigation, tens of millions of dollars, special counsel Robert Mueller concluded that President Trump did not collude with the Russians. He did not commit any crime with the Russian government during the 2016 election. Despite years of press coverage to the contrary, the president didn't do it. And yet, polls conducted after the Mueller report show that nearly half of Americans continue to believe that Trump committed some crime with the Russians and rigged the 2016 election. We all saw the report. Nobody read it, but everybody saw it. You know, you read like 10 pages of it, and you said, oh, of course I read the whole thing. Mueller spent several years and tens of millions of dollars investigating. The president didn't do it, and yet half of Americans think he did. This is not the fault of colleges. This is not the fault of high schools or middle schools or elementary schools. This fault lies with a far more popular instrument of miseducation, and that is the fault of the mainstream media. So many of the falsehoods that pervade our culture today owe their ubiquity to the mainstream media, which brings us to our latest uncomfortable truth. You know, I've tried to do a different uncomfortable truth on every stage of this tour, and tonight's is that the mainstream media really are fake news. The term fake news has a very convoluted history. It began with the comedian Norm Macdonald on Saturday Night Live. He was the first one to popularize fake news. Then after the 2016 election, the left employed the term as a way of delegitimizing conservative news sources, my news outlet in particular, but other ones as well. Then immediately, the right appropriated the term, and we used the term to refer to the mainstream media. That completely stuck. Why did it stick? because the mainstream media are fake news. Take just the example of Russian collusion. The entire Russian collusion narrative began with an unverified dossier written by the British spy Christopher Steele and published by BuzzFeed in early 2017. If you didn't read it, you know, don't. You don't, you don't need to look too far into it. It included lots of lurid tales of ladies of the night and hotel beds in Moscow. And because this is a family-friendly lecture tour, I will just leave it at that, okay? Suffice it to say, the Steele dossier provided the basis for the special counsel investigation in the first place. The Steele dossier was compiled by Fusion GPS. Fusion GPS is an oppo research firm that was hired by the Hillary Clinton campaign and by the DNC to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. Who staffed Fusion GPS? Lots and lots of mainstream media journalists, like former journalist Glenn Simpson, the founder of Fusion. Also on the payroll were operatives with ties to Democrat-employed government officials, such as Nellie Orr, who is the wife of a senior Justice Department employee under Barack Obama. Now, in September 2016, Barack Obama's FBI tried to get a FISA court to give them permission to spy on the Trump campaign. What did they use as the basis of that? The Steele dossier, cooked up by a British spy, paid for by Democrats through Fusion GPS. But the dossier wasn't enough. So the FBI had to go in and find a mainstream news report to back up the Steele dossier. They went out and they found a Yahoo News article written by Michael Isakoff. That was supposed to be independent corroboration of this Democrat-funded dossier. The trouble is, though, do you know who the source was for Yahoo News? I'll give you one guess. It was Christopher Steele, who was being paid for by the Democrats through Fusion GPS, through a bunch of mainstream media journalists and Democrat operatives, but I repeat myself. 